Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, transportation in the future, about the type of cars that we will have maybe in 2061. Uh, we have been working on autonomous cars for several years, and since uh, last year we have been driving in Berlin. We have been driving automatically using a car that uh, takes you anywhere in the city. Um, so if you want to think about the future and think about the necessity of smart cars. So why do we need intelligent cars? Uh, first of all, um, we already have a lot of cars. We have almost one billion cars, and the number of cars will triple until 2050. Also transportation, the transportation s sector is one of the main uh, emitters of CO2. Um, the, Carbon emissions will grow 250% until 2050 if we don't change the way we uh, drive in the streets, we travel in the streets, we, we move around. And if you look around when you are sitting on a traffic jam, every, everybody spends hours and hours in traffic jams every week, every month. If, we, if you look around, you notice that most of the cars are only being used one, by one person. So 1.3 persons sit on average on a car when you are on a traffic jam. Um, intelligent cars, smart cars, cars that drive by themselves, they could be the solution if we make them safer, if we can make them cheaper, because now, right now they are very expensive, and also uh, they will be faster when uh, for moving you around in the city. If you think uh, about the way we use cars today, 95% of the time or 90% of the time the cars are just sitting there, they are not doing anything useful. And if we uh, don't transform the way uh, cars are being used, especially also in developing countries, this could be 2061. This could be the reality. Cities uh, not, not moving anymore. Everybody sitting in the car. We have an alternative for this, uh, an alternative view, and this is what I'm going to show you in this video. Um, here you see uh, a person coming out of a, of a hotel. And then uh, you just take your iPhone or your uh, tablet. The tablet knows where you are, knows your coordinates. You can send them, and you can ask for a transportation, for a car. You can ask for a taxi to pick you up. Um, this car, this is our car. This is uh, one of the parking lots at the university. When the car receives the signal, it just starts, uh, goes to the hotel where the person is calling the taxi. Uh, the person can follow the position of the car on the screen, knows uh, where it is. And uh, since we are the developers of this uh, software, we can also see what the, what the car is doing. We can watch the laser data. We can watch the video cameras. We can see exactly what's happening with the car. Now here you see the car arriving. Uh, the car picks uh, uh, the person and drives you there, drives you where, whenever you want to go. Uh, there would be no advantage if we just wanted to drive one person from the hotel to the place uh, where this, this person wants to go. The advantage would be, in this case, that um, if you need a car, you don't need to have a car in your garage. You just call a, a, a car. The car can pick your neighbor, can pick your other neighbor, can drive you three to your uh, working place, or can you drive you to the, to the subway, to the subway station, can combine car travel with public transportation, and in this way, we can move more people with uh, a, a smaller number of cars. If you want to do this, if you want to have this alternative, then you need a lot of sensors in the car. You need to, to make the car intelligent. First of all, the car needs to know where it is. It needs a navigation unit, a GPS navigation unit. It needs to have fillers. Fillers are laser scanners that can sense what's around and it needs eyes to see the world around. Uh, these are the laser scanners. This is what I would call the fillers. The fillers are just pulses of light that go out and are reflected by the environment. Uh, the distance to the uh, objects can be measured in this way. And then you get a coverage of all the surroundings, which is much more than a human can perceive. So when you are driving, you can only see to the front and maybe to the back through the rear mirror using laser scanners, the car knows everything around in 360 degrees, 100 meters around, 
And so you get not just uh, a perception, or the car gets not just a perception of uh, what's around, but also even a 3D dimensional uh, map of the city. The car can, go, can get out, can, can see the trees, can see the, the, the buildings, can see everything which is around, and you can even use these maps for navigating the car. I'm going to show you how this looks when the car is uh, driving. So this is the laser scanner sensing the surroundings. The car is driving in uh, one of the main uh, streets in Berlin, Kaiserdam, going to Brandenburg Gate. And uh, the boxes you see there are just the obstacles that have been detected by the car. When uh, you restrict the view of the vehicle to the obstacles on the street, then you can see that there are two cars in the back of, of the vehicle. There are uh, two cars in front. The car can even see the cars in the, on the other lanes. Uh, it's fully aware of the surroundings. And when uh, you get to this crossing near to the technical university, then you can see from this uh, video that the car can even count the number of vehicles sitting there at the intersection. Can optimize also the time it takes to arrive to the intersection, can optimize uh, also the use of energy. The car needs eyes, not just fillers. It needs eyes to see the environment. And uh, this uh, video gives you an idea of uh, the full level of detail that you get when you put five video cameras in front of the car. Uh, we have one video camera for detecting the lane. We have two video cameras for doing stereo recognition, for detecting the distance to the objects. And if you, when you look at this picture, you see that this person stands out in the, in the, in, as uh, something in the, in the foreground of the image, and it stands out because it's moving. And uh, you can even see the, the, the traffic light, which is about to change. And when it changes, then the vehicle can start moving. The vehicle is fully aware of the surroundings, not just because it has uh, the laser scanners that give the position of the vehicles, but even because the vehicle can see the, uh, the different uh, objects through the use of its own eyes. Um, the car is not just feeling, it's not just seeing, it's also optimizing your path, it's thinking what's the optimal way to go somewhere, what's the optimal way to drive around if you uh, compute the optimal path, then you can, you can save energy. You can save energy by braking at the right moment. You can, re uh, you can recover energy from the brakes if you have an electric car. And uh, if you use electric cars and if you combine them, uh, then you can go on the street. And this is uh, our experiment in the city of Berlin. I wanted to show you this. This is the car driving in, on the city. And in this case, uh, we wanted to go to Brandenburg Gate. First, we had to show to the authorities, to the traffic authorities in Berlin, that the car is safe. So we had to make a lot of tests. We, had, we went to an airport, a closed airport in Berlin. We have a remote control. And then when the traffic authorities tested the car and saw that it was safe, that we could drive up to 120 kilometers per hour, and we could uh, detect all the obstacles on the, on the, on the street, they gave us the permission to start driving in Berlin. Um, the only condition that they put us for driving in Berlin was to have a safety driver. So this is our car going on the Autobahn in Berlin. The safety driver is just watching the car. He's ready to intervene uh, in case any anything happens. Has a button that disconnects the, the automatic in, in the car, the automatic control. And um, having this... Uh, this security, this safety, this additional safety for the authorities, we were allowed to go into the streets. If you have been in Berlin, you know that uh, Berlin drivers are very aggressive. <laughs> they really come very close to your, to your uh, car. And um, it's, a, it's a good proof of concept for the cars of the future, for the, for the kind of driving that we will have when we have to recognize not just the traffic lights, but also all the uh, 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 maybe changes in the, in, in the shape of the streets, maybe changes in the distribution of the lanes. Here you can see that the car is not just uh, using the, the map of the city to navigate from one point to the other. It's also using its eyes to recognize the exact position of the lane, the exact position where um, the car is going. This is uh, the last uh, intersection before arriving to uh, Brandenburg Gate. And um, uh, when uh, we did these experiments uh, uh, last year and uh, also in this year, 
um, people were uh, a little ex ex skeptic about uh, the possibilities of autonomous cars in the future. But I think that the technology has, has, has advanced to the point where we can use this technology already in closed environments. We can use this technology already in uh, the highway. We will be using this technology on the streets in a few more years. Um, this is my last picture. This is one uh, picture from an article in 1918. This was the vision of the car of the future. And the person who wrote this article wrote about autonomous cars. So these are people riding on, 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 the, on a vehicle, but there is no driver. They are, they, they are just sitting there. They are being driven around. And for getting to this point, we, had to, we, we needed 100 years. It took us 100 years from, one, uh, from 1918 to today to get the technology going. We now have the technology, but we need three more factors. We need acceptance, we need legal acceptance, we need to modify the laws. We need uh, traffic acceptance, we need to show that safety, the safety of these cars is high enough, is much better than the safety that humans can provide while driving. And most of us, we need, most of all, we need social ac acceptance. We need to show people that this vision of having autonomous cars for doing car sharing at the level of the whole city, that this vision can transform autonomous cars in the green cars of the future. Thank you very much.